Good evening all, how you doing? Hope you're doing well. I see we've got a Pond of Pimba and Darius here, but let's see who else is lurking around. Oh, would help if I'm on the right machine. So hello once again to Darius and hi to Jace. Electrical Skateboard and Finisil, Love Like Semtex, Pixel Outlaw, Pond of Pimp, Sergeant Quiff, and a bot. Good to see you all. Uh, no sound, says Pond of Pimp. That's worrying. Um, sounds fine over at Darius. That's good, because Mike is showing good on my end. Sorry, sir. Let's hope just a uh, refresh and Twitch will fix that. Okay, so... Today, we're just going to be poking around with, basically, um... Code Raiden. Um, so last week we looked at... So, we, like, actually, we've been... We've been looking really at just very common effects that it would be nice to have in Nineveh. Um, and so a couple of ones, we again, we looked at... Did we look at some distortion last week? I can remember we were looking at the... Um, not the chromatic aberration. Come on, brain. Where'd it go? Um, the vignette and stuff like this. Uh, I was going to have a look at the barrel blur stuff today as well, just because it's kind of a cute thing to have. I'd also like to get uh, FXAA because it's an anti-aliasing technique that's just so easy to throw on top of things because it's okay. I mean, it's good enough for a lot of things. I mean, Battlefield 3 was using this thing or something like it anyway, an earlier iteration, I think. Um, it's, uh, yeah, super fast. It's one uh, post-process um, pixel shader. It's written by someone who really knows their shit. It's, it's fantastic and it's public domain. Uh, so, that'll make a really good candidate for getting into Keppel. So, went on to Shader Toy, where you can find a lot of things sampled, ready to go already. Hello, Mimirom! Good to see you. Um, and I was looking at this guy. So you've got this shader, which is just showing the difference between no FX AA, and it sweeps back, and, uh... That this is with the anti-aliasing and everything's smoothed out a bit. There's still noise and aliasing around. But the main point, the reason I liked this example, was it had the FXAA stuff as a single function all tidied up here. Um, and the reason that was interesting... So, uh, yeah, the reason that was interesting... Let's go and find it. F X A A. Uh, oops. What am I doing? I don't know, just, I think there's a, there we go. This thing is awesome. It's a beast, right? And the reason it's a beast is because it's got defines for just about every platform. So three, Xbox 360, PS3, all that kind of stuff. There's all defines set up for this, uh, which makes it quite an interesting thing to, um, well, I mean, I'll have to do some work on this to have it be something acceptable that we can then port over to um, GLSL. More on that later because I've got an idea. I've got an idea for that one, um, which I tried to poke around with beforehand. Should work. Um, but this guy, there's some stuff already done, and it was going. Hey, this is um, this is a uh, yeah, Rinder, um, another demo scene dude. So this is. Um, Tokyo, and this is, yeah, this was his demo Tokyo. Was it demo or is it just a, uh, it's probably just this, um, just a shader. My brain's going, I've been up, uh, yeah, I didn't sleep much last night, and I got up about 6am to go for a swim, um, because it's sunny and hot by then over here, it's fucking awesome. Um, but I am running real low now, so we're gonna see, I've got coffee on standby, uh, I'm gonna need a lot of that, so expect a coffee break part way through this. Um, yeah, anyway, he's taken something he's already got and he's showing um, FXAA acting on it. And he's got this kind of sweep thing going over there, which is pretty easy to remove. Like, this is the bit that does the line, so we can just remove that. There's the bit without the FXAA. There's the FXAA. So we do this. Uh, take this stuff. And... Don't need split cord anymore. That's probably it. Yeah, okay. So that's that's how you can invoke it. And this is uh, this is the actual code all tidied up. Now, one little thing. It says the code is from here, which is cool. 
Um, so let's go and have a look at that. Open a new tab. And here is the code um, that they've got, which is ace. But the reason I'm a little worried about this one is what this was talking about when FXAA was new a little while ago. Um, and Timothy Lotz, who came up with it. What a dude. Um, a few days ago, he published FXAA2, an evolution of this. And this, I assume, is what the code is in the other thing. Which is an issue, because we've got FXA3.11 now. Assumedly with bug fixes and things like this in it. Or some kind of fixes. It might have just been expanded on what platforms it supports, but I bet there's something else as well. Um, let's have a look at the version. Um, yeah. So I would kind of like to use this, and I have an idea. So it would be cool to take this and just see if we can run it through the cross compiler and get something out. And then at least we've got something. So like, actually, let's do that now. So let's do okay um right code glsl fxaa um two probably oh okay right and let's just put c mode on so we get a nice little bit of highlighting and it freaking out a little um Okay, now I don't support, I'm not sure how basically um, the GLSL toolkit stuff is going to handle the fines. So all I'm going to do for now is define them as variables here and just rely on constant folding to get rid of them. Um, so let's take these guys. Um, And assuming they're all floats, um, I can see that I'm not doing C much. So I've got that horrible GNU indenting default of eight million characters. Um, okay. So assuming it doesn't freak out about that. Let's see if we can put this through something and get some Lisp code. So I have a really hacky project called Vario Import, and it's based on the excellent work by Shimera, who did a proper um, GLSL parser that he uses in his engine, stuff like this. Um, so actually, let's don't worry about it. Package do Vario Import. But like I say, I'm using it in a really funky way. So we'll see how this goes. Um, okay, there we go. Not bad. Uh, code Lisp. That's just a uh, FXAA um, Lisp two. There we go. So, other than the fact that. Got a few bits of shittiness here. We're all right. Let's see if we can just ditch all these. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Yeah, let's just go for it. There we go. Okay, so that, that went better than I expected, actually. Okay, so we've potentially got um, FXAA2 available now. What I would actually end up doing, I think I'll define these as constants outside of uh, this shader, and then I'll rely on Keppel's um, and Vario's constant for like constant injection uh, to actually put the values into the shader, um, and that should be fine. Maybe. Now, actually, the reason I might consider not doing that is. It, it's a stupid compatibility thing, really. I, I don't think it affects any implementation that you would actually use for writing games in Lisp, but um, floats don't need to be 
uh, IE 754 floats. They can be any kind of float as long as they conform to the Lisp spec. While most implementations naturally are using um, like the standardized floats on um, the platforms we're interested in, namely uh, x86 type platforms, then it shouldn't be a problem. But still, uh, if we put these outside in a constant and they're not represented like that, when they're injected, they might have, um, like their pre precision might be off. So, uh, don't know. But that's handy. Okay, so we've got something we can play with anyway. We should be able to do this thing. But I would love to get this guy. And the way we're going to do it is we're going to go back to GLSL again. We're going to go FXA311. We're going to, oh, I'm not going to paste that because I need to copy it again. Um, we're going to paste that there. Then what we're going to do, um, Right, where where are we here? I think we're just going to have to kind of go through this guide and see what we've got here, because there's a lot of things we can tweak, apparently. Um, all right, so the first bit is the message and the diverging uh, diverging of all uh, rights and licenses and all that. Oh, this is all in a comment anyway, so this doesn't matter. <laughs> just turn on C mode so I can see what's going on. Cool. So, don't really need this. Setup defines for the desired configuration when providing multiple shaders for different presets. Uh, simply set up the defines differently in multiple files. Nice. And then include that thing. Cool. Then call the pixel shader from uh, within your desired shader. Awesome. Okay. Ensure the texture samplers used by FXA are set to bilinear filtering. You need to keep an eye on that. <laughs> but we'll come back to that soon. Okay. RGB Luma as input unless the following is set. Green as Luma 1. In which case the engine uses green in place of Luma. Now nah, we'll just pass in Luma. Surely we can calculate that. Um, RGB should be LDR, low dynamic range. Uh, specifically do FXA after tone mapping. Fair enough, that's fine. Um, the way, if I remember correctly, that FXA works is that it does like an edge. Because the goal is we're trying to smooth out rough edges, but not to blur any of the actual contact because smoothing is blurring so we only want to blur the edges we don't want to blur any other good stuff and the way it does that is it does essentially an edge detection um, and then tries to blur the edges which is very cool um, so yeah we actually we're trying to um, blur trying to anti-alias the final content so we want to do that after tone mapping um, which makes sense Just see what's going on over in chat. Oh, thanks, Ponder Pimp, for sticking the gist in the chat. You people are awesome. Cool. <laughs> Darry says the Ponder Pimp bot is working real good. Damn right it is. I thought last time that it would be cool to have in, in the YouTube description the links. I just click some of the timestamps of the video. So that would be really dope. But uh, like you say, yeah, it would be annoying to do by hand. Um... Yeah, it's one of those things. After I get done with this, I just throw it online and do, like, chop the be the blank 10 minutes from the beginning off. And I don't know. I don't feel like doing much more than that. Obviously, all the uh, chats are logged in um, by uh, Chimera's bot. So um, if you find uh, Chimera's uh, IRC logs, you can find all the logs with timestamps. Uh, for all the thing, for a lot of the episodes at least. Let's go and see if I can find that quickly. Um, let me just do this over here. One second. 
Genera IRC. It's probably Shirakumo or something like this. Um, There we go, irclog.timoon.eu. Um, you throw that in the chat, there you go. Last time I checked, I didn't actually check right then. Uh, but yeah, there is a baggers under the Twitch section. Um, which are these logs here, and that's what uh, Tycholine's doing. Recording all these things. So that's available. Um, of course, if anyone wants to do the hard work for me and put like some of the missing information in the YouTube video, I'd love that. Um, but yeah, I kind of exhausted at the end of these, so. I don't think I'll be doing them. Sorry. Sergeant Queeves just arrived. Hello! Um... Yeah, Ponder Pip, you are right. I need to... Yeah, I, I need to... I should do that. I should. If I can if I can make it a little easier, what I should do is just set up a little script that will grab the uh, links out of that chat log, actually. From the... Um, yeah, I could do that, actually, couldn't I? And then I can just paste in the result. Okay, that's on my to-do. I will, I will get to that. Sweet. Okay, so we're going to have to look up how to store Luma in the... Uh... Oh, no, it's... <laughs> Okay. This Luma should be in perpetual space. Perceptual space. Oh, dear. Perpetual space. Uh, could be gamma 2. Example pass before FXA where output is um, gamma 2 encoded. Hmm. We'll have to look into this. Oh, I, I've seen this. So, okay, so we, linear color output, gamma two colored output, compute luma. Okay, I don't understand, but I've seen an example of this code being used, and I've got some tone mapping functions in um, Nineveh. We're gonna have to do a tone mapping episode at some point as well, because it's one of those things I don't really understand. But I have code for, so we should do that. Anyway, so let's color space. We're going to do not as green as Luma. We're going to pass in Luma in the W uh, component. Don't worry about linear correct. We'll cover that another time. Complex, well, I mean, we'll, we'll do it right, but it's just a uh, Complex integration, what if the engine is blending into RGB before wanting to run? Okay, we're not going to have that issue right now. Okay, so here we are, integration knobs. This is the stuff we need to look at. Okay. Okay, so we're not... Okay, so we really need to set that. We're not going to be uh, doing this in GLSL. We're not doing it in H HLSL. We're not using uh, green as Luma. Okay, controls, algorithms, early exit path. Okay, it's on by default. That sounds sensible. Um, see, this this is life. Like this is in games. There are two cycles added to the shader. Fuck that. Might have to turn it off. AA discard only valid for PC OpenGL currently. Uses discard on pixels that don't need the AA. That's an interesting one, actually. Um, We'll start with zero, but that's something I want to come back and play with. Um, 
I'm just putting it up there as a reminder. FXA fast pixel offset using GLSL 120 only, so we don't care about that. Um, don't understand that. PS3. PS3 edge threshold quality. We are going to whack this up to the top. Um, we have no worries. Like we're not in any kind of limited platform. So there's really no need for us to do anything other than top quality. So we'll do 39. Um, and again, I'm just saying that based on uh, games and demos I've seen use this stuff. So they just just throw it up there. You're on a desktop PC. We're not, we don't have to worry about this. Um, oh, it's not 3.11, it's 3.11. Idiot. Versioning. Okay. And then this is stuff all based on what values we pick. So that's cool. We'll get to the point and see if this is actually going to work in a minute, but I have ideas. Um, okay, I think that's as much as we need to fiddle with. Yeah, we're outside of the defines now and into implementation stuff. So, okay, we're going to save this. Um, I'm quickly going to check uh, on some, one of my mate's code. Let's have a look. Um, I'm going to go back here. As I saw a name I recognized around here somewhere. Yeah, Movie Magic by Ferris. Uh, this is some stuff that he had in one of his demos. Um, and you can see the last, there's a bunch of passes going on here, but the final pass is a, uh, just got the FXAA shader just dumped in here with some things set. So he set GLSL 1.3 because that's what he's using. PC quality high. Um, that's all I needed to see really. So we're doing PC quality high and I'm not using this yet, but I might play with it at some point. But now this is done, what I'd like to do is remove all the code, um, all the defines, everything that's not actually um, relevant to what we need here. Um, and we're going to do it by just saving this code um, as a C file, hopefully. Right, so copy this to FXAA11, whatever, 311.C. And then we're going to run the, pre the uh, C preprocessor on it. And seeing as it's only defines we're really interested in, I'm hoping we just get away with this and we end up with some results. So there's a way to do this uh, that I saved here. Cool. GCC minus E, or this. So let's bring up E shell. Let's do FXAA C. Trimmed minus GLSL. Done. And let's see what we got. Okay, so we've got a little gumph up front. Uh, there's comments down through here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete, uh, delete non-matching lines. Um, oh no, sorry. Delete matching lines. Delete anything with a hash. Cool. So that's gone. Ah, I should actually, hmm, I'll undo that just in case there's a hash at the end of line. Uh, let's just do uh, delete matching lines, new line hash. Oh, is that going to work? Oh, fuck it. Let's just. Is there any hash that has anything else before it? Just scan through these quickly. No, okay. Right. Do that again. Delete matching lines, hash. There we go. Um. Let's put this in C mode. Let's indent it. Um, let's, uh, yeah, let's look through what we've got here. I can see some things with console written in it. So I bet those arguments are not used. So let's actually, let's just go with console. Console, 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 console. Console, that's the last argument to this function. Nothing. Okay, so. 
let's go through and remove all the blank lines. So two empty lines replaced with one empty line. And just do that a couple of times. Probably a better way of doing this, but this fucking worked. It's done already. First time you don't really need to optimize that process. Drop that down to a new line. Uh, let's go and look what we've got down here. Okay, so this is just the function. Dope. Um, okay. So basically, I think we can just remove everything with console in it here. So, um, console. Actually, we already checked that those are the only lines with that thing. So we'll just do console. That's done. And now we actually have a trimmed down version of this function. The only thing we've got is this um, FXAA Luma function that only uses, the, again, like in GLSL, this would totally get inlined. So this wouldn't be a function call, this would just be inlined here. We could zip through and just do something like, um, I don't know, F3 search for FXAA Luma, um, like this, and then go to the end of the line and do W, and then just hold down right macro and it's finished. But, I don't know, it's kind of informative to have, ah, uh, no, we know that, yeah, actually, that's fine. We'll keep that. There we go, got rid of that function too. So, where are we now? This looks suspect to me. Oh no, this is a bunch of nested ifs. I just remember when we looked at the original, there were loads of defines around these, around this area. So I just want to make sure that, because this is, again, a lot of conditionals. Um, and I'm wondering if something fucked up. Let's take, I don't know. This line here. That appears in a few places. Okay, and let's go and have a look at the original. So, FXAA. Dot GLSL. Okay. Ah, okay. That's why. So there, there are a lot of uh, defines here, but they're all based on the quality. And because we set our quality to the highest level, um, yeah, we've, we've got all of them. So I guess that's the cost you're paying here. So this is basically like a big old, <laughs> kind of like a big old unrolled loop. Um, but that's fine. Okay, I'm less worried about that now. Now, can we turn this into Lisp code? That is the question. And the reason I'm doing this is purely so we can uh, mix and match it with all the other functions we've got. Like when we, when we have things as our defungg functions, anytime you use it um, as a function or use it as a stage, it gets compiled in different ways. You can pass these things to other functions and all that kind of stuff. So it's it's nice if we can have it in that format because it's just more powerful to us that way. Um, let's have a look what's going on, chat. Sergeant Queen, I should pour myself some rum. Dude, that's such a good idea. I am like a couple of hours from now, I'm, I'm grabbing a beer and then my brain is turning off. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. We definitely like Pondipum, yeah. Yeah, like actually now that um, there's an easy way to get the times and links out of um, the chat. Well, now I've realized there's an easy way. It's super scriptable, so I, I'm very down for doing that um, at the end of every stream and adding it to the YouTube stuff. That'd be cool. 
Sergeant Quip saying, doesn't that look like an unrolled group? Does indeed. But just because I saw those defines. Pixel Outlaw just came back. Holy nested ifs, Batman. Totally. Yeah. It's uh, one of those times that you just trust that like, this guy actually knows what he's <laughs> He knows what he's doing. It's fine. But like, yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of crazy. Normally steer the hell away from conditionals where possible in a uh, shader code just because of, yeah, divergence and other slowness, but this has been well tested. Okay, so what should we do? What shall we do? Um, well, we've got this saved now. So let's try and do the same thing as before. If this works, I will be very surprised. Um, this is not what I think is going to happen. Vario dot import. Import GLSL function, and we're just going to go that. Okay, no, that's uh, that's fine. But what's good is... Okay, I'll, I'll show you what's good, actually. If I jump to this definition. Um, right. It's only my shitty code that's the problem. Um, GLSL toolkit um, pass given that same thing totally worked. Right? That is our um, that's our shader turned into S expressions ready to be transformed into something more more sociable. And it's only the um, the way I'm using it is a bit shitty. Uh, when, when, I, when I hacked together what I've got, it was done in like an afternoon um, with a much earlier version of GLSL Toolkit. So this has grown a lot since I started using it. And uh, yeah, it can, it can, it is a lot better now. Um, and it's really cool. So in here is our code. We just need to turn this into uh, Keppel code and we will have the latest um, FXAA shader. That's dope. Okay, cool. So, I think because that code is messy, I think trying to bodge that into working will probably be fruitless. Um, so I'm not sure whether I will do that now. Um, oh, one second. One second. One second. One second. Um, Good. Um, Vario dot import import GLSL function um, whatever that was called FXAA code. <laughs> Let's have a quick look just in case it's something simple. But it's this compound statement stuff. Um, I guess wasn't there when I first was doing this. Let's have a look. Import form. <laughs> Okay, so before conditionals always had the form op left, right, then else. And now they can be compound statements as well. So I would have to support that. Let's see. 
if else, da, 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 import form. Then, do we handle compound statements tool? We do have a compound statement. Okay, so we really just need to support the this case of, oh God, here we go. Here we go. Right. If it's not that, then let's just do case like that. And then then, cool. So this uh, pattern matching library I'm using here is Optima, I expect. It tells me how long I've been since I did this. Yeah, this is using Optima um, with Fari's uh, quasi-quote extras, which allows me to use uh, these quasi-quote patterns, which are fucking awesome. It just makes everything quite clean, um, given how hacky this is. So... Let's have a look at that. I know I'm just getting into a rabbit hole here. I can tell. Right. Okay, so it's when... Come on, Chris. Where is it? Import form case. Import form then. Okay. So then we're going to take this form, which is a conditional with whores span. Let's just uh, have a look at that. I'm pretty sure I know roughly what's going on here. Let's have a look. So we're looking for whores span. Oh, there we go. If whores span. POS M, POS M, field modifier Y, which looks like this, uh, plus equals, yep, it's an assignment, multiplication, pixel offset subject, oh yeah, it's this one, it's this one right here, and it's freaking out because rather than um, having some kind of operator and arguments, it's just the, this form, um, well that's fine, okay, so yeah, that's, that is, we want to turn that into a when in Lisp, and this is going to import whatever the um, form is that we're using as the test. Actually, that's what this should be called. Test. Test. Let's test. Test. There we go. Right. Abort. Let's go back to the ribble. Unknown expression. Inversion. Ah, uh, wait a second. Let's have a look, though. Import bull when inversion. That's going to be not. I'm very sure that's enough. Sorry, guys. It looks like I am going to hack this together. For fuck's sake, Chris. Uh, <laughs> inversion form. Actually, we don't even need that, do we? We can just do... Um... Ah, we will, though. We will. Right. It's going to be not import form. Form. Okay. Ooh, shit. That's a rare one. All right, let's see how many more we're going to get of these. Oh dear. Okay, that's a um, a bool expression with a um, then and an else. 
Annoyingly, I know what to do there as well, so, uh... Oh, come on. Import statement. Where are we? Import form. There we go. <sighs> then else, import bool if. Because um, it would be really cool if we could just get this in. It would be. If we could just hack this into shape. This would be kind of nice. Huh. Something else. Import bool when. Done MP. Wow, it's a bunch of stuff. Import statement. Import statement done MP equals blah 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 blah. Logical or inversions. What's wrong with that? That looks pretty reasonable, actually. And it's complaining that I've got an assert in there which is not holding. So, let's jump to that definition. Here we go. This looks like a piece of shit. This looks like something I threw in there while I was debugging something else. Wait a second, foo. Yeah, there's no way that that's me screwing up something else. What? Okay. Wait, what? Where did they get foo from? Ah. <laughs> yes. I guess I didn't have these at the time. Okay. I see why the foo had to be there. Left shift, right shift. Pretty sure we've got all these, haven't we? Let's see what's going on in the chat. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Sergeant Grieve, I love you make it sound like you're done now. It is done. As soon as you get into S expressions, like the problem is basically solved. You're nearly there. It's like it's been like unencrypted from whatever nonsense it was before. <laughs> Borrow us bodge it. That is a banter for us all. Sergeant Grieve. Okay, so that was it for today, folks. Yeah, fucking... <sighs> the good old, I'll just do this another day. And I haven't. I haven't done it another day. Oh, I'm glad you folks love it, because... <laughs> There's no point running git blame. It's all me. It's all my fault. If it's working, it's Shimera stuff. If it's broken, it's mine. There's, there's your git blame. Okay, so I'm just going to go and check to make sure that um, Vario source um, Vario.glsl Actually GLSL spec operators.lisp Yeah, we've got shift 
We've got shift, it's fine. Right, let's see if I can do this without cocking anything up. Left shift. Right shift. Bitwise and. What's our bitwise and? I wonder if we just have all the proper ones as well. Oh, we have a... Oh, that's nice of us. <laughs> Wait a second, bitwise and. It's just straight and, isn't it? Whoops. Oh yes, this will be fun. Yeah. Right. Did we provide... I'm hoping we provided some lispy alternatives to this. Uh, bitwise operators, hello. Oh, look at that, Logior. Perfect. Log and. Wait a second. Okay. I think that's okay. Wait a second, if that was includes oh that was exclusive all oops shit. What's um I can see it, log X or over there. Huh. GLSL exclusive all. Oh no, it's hat. Okay. You know what? I'm going to be... Wait a second. See, this is the stuff when I look at it that my head goes a bit funny on because we've got logical ant, which to me is just this, like your normal, straightforward and not your bitwise and, right? Sorry, I, I know it's a dumb question, but I'm I should apply it. Because log and in in Lisp is operating on integers, and it is possible that I've defined these incorrectly. Um, so that's why I was tempted to define these just in terms of their GLSL symbols. Um, what is the correct thing to use here? Logical and I would have thought was just... Actually, we don't need to quote any of these. Ah, see, this is the problem. Then you get... How do you quote this fucker? Is that right? Or is always the problem? No. Can you have just one pipe? Yes. You can't have just one pipe. Um, actually, wait a second. Um, 
I can just find out the answer. See. That's how you write that. Interesting. So does that look sensible to anyone? Or have I just fucking got everything backwards today? Why are you getting a foo? Why are you a foo? Let me guess, was that a deaf var? Yes it was. It's not like I haven't fucked that up a thousand times. Not implemented. Import place. Interesting. What is this? Okay, let's go and have a look at the error again. Import place with a modified reference. What is a modified reference anyway? We could just try it, I suppose. Import place. I wonder what an import place was though. I want to know what this is in the original code because I don't want to fuck this up. Here we go. Oh no, we should use our uh, trimmed version. Because this is a bitch to understand. Call modifier. Oh, right, okay, so. Oh, give me that in the REPL. Okay. This is so hard to do on a tiny screen or like tiny resolution. Right, okay. FXAA text top. We've got a lot of those. It's a call modifier. Uh, it's got a modified reference to POSP. Um, so let's just FXA text top. Oh, it's right down here, maybe? No. Boss P, something like this. Yeah, this is one of these if done ones. This could be it. I think we're just gonna import place. Hmm. Let's go see what calls that because port field access and port because the modified reference thing we already have code for. So I wonder if we just do import form or something. Let's try it. Let's just say if Holy shit, it finished. We really need to check that last one though. <laughs> 
Oh, it's going to be F X A A Tex Top or something. Holy moly. That is a lot of nesting. Oh, it's so much better when it has expressions. <laughs> what a mess. Hilarious. But apparently it's in. Oof. All right, let's uh let's pretend this never happened. Okay. Um Come on, Lisp, where are you? There we go. What a monster! It's like 800 lines. Oh, and we've got problems here. Look at this. Right off the bat, there are there are issues there. I wonder if that's in the other one as well. Julius L. Toolkit type name. That is a something that's quoted that shouldn't be. God damn it. Type name. Huh. Oh no, it's not. It's something I just haven't translated properly. Got a lead expression. Man, see, this is why I, sh I shouldn't start these things during the stream, because it just ends up winding on. Right, let's go have a quick look, though. Let's start. Where do we generate those? Uh, there we go. Nah, fuck it. <laughs> fuck it. This is going to be too much of a task. We're already wasted like half the episode. Let's just use the one that looked like it worked the first time around. Okay, so we're going to need to actually have something to render if we're going to do this. So let's go and have a look with Play With Verts, which we had last time. Uh, let's load Slime. Let's load Play With Verts. Let's see in what fantastic ways... It was broken. Okay. I hope that wasn't too painful for you all. Sorry about that. It was, uh... Oh. We've botched it into actually producing some code, but there's still some things that need fixing, so it's like... I know that's going to be another 10 minutes, and then it's another 10 minutes after that, and we finish the first hour. Um, in package play reverts. Um, play reverts. Let's have a look. What is it? Just, oh yeah, play. Start. Let's see if we get any errors when this kicks off. We probably will. Yeah. Okay. Um, prog IDs. Someone's calling free pipeline on a nil. That's interesting. Didn't reset, really? I don't know, that's interesting. pipeline. That's an odd one. I mean, because there's a few things here, but if it passed nil, why did it go to pipeline? Oh well. Like... Oh no, sorry. Okay. Something's calling prog IDs on nil. So it's, it's defaulted to 
this. So something called free, and then that got rooted to free pipeline, and it was nil, so then it's trying to do something stupid. Okay, so I'm going to need to need to look at that as well. Um, where should I put this? Um, come on now, Chris. There we go. Put that there for now. We can deal with that later. I bought... Yeah. We're calling free on things when they weren't there in the first place. So, let's try this again. There we are. Looks fucking terrible. Um, let's see what we were doing to it. Oh yeah, we got radial blurs on things. That's appropriate. Ugh, it still looks fucking terrible. Oh, god damn it. I hit it when I press the wrong button like that. Come on. Wind it back into the corner you're meant to be in. And then it's got so many events cached up. So I was just holding it down that it goes wailing on past. Okay. Right, that looks a bit better. Okay, so this was what we had last time. And what we do have are lots of horrible jaggies all on the edge of things around here. It'd be really nice if we could smooth those out. And we would do that with anti-aliasing. So, let's go and... Um, Grab us some anti-aliasing stuff. So we have um, if we are very lucky that stuff we had before might work. And if not, it's going to freak out. Oh yeah, it's not called sampler 2D. It's called sampler hyphen 2D. So there's another problem in the vario import thing. Uh, it's aware that deer is currently unbound. Oh, that's interesting. Um, I hope it's right. Um, yeah, deer is a vec2, and then it's trying to... Ah, oh, that's allowed though. Whoops. Fuck me. Um... Okay, so that's actually a bug in Vario where you can't set individual components of an uninitialized vector. Ah, okay. Uh, <laughs> bug two. What we'll do instead, seeing as they're being set right after, let's just go and initialize the vector two there. Um, here they are. Man, if after all this we don't get something working out of this, it's going to be quite disappointing. Could not find the correct type spec for that. You should be able to. Seems it's a bloody VEC2. Oh yeah, at one extra level of unnecessary indentation. Oh, I see another importing issue, and this is why we shouldn't... When? Ah, what was this meant to be then? Something looks funky. Yeah, that doesn't look great, does it? Let's go back up to our trimmed GLSL. Let's see what we can find down the bottom of here. Ooh. Oh no, it's not, sorry, it's not this one, is it? It's the uh, FXAA2 GLSL down here. 
Okay, if this or this return that. Why is the return set? Oh man, I'm gonna have to go and... That's very interesting. More bugs in Vario import, which makes sense, because that thing is a bloody mess. Um, so it's just this or that. Okay, then let's make it an if. If that, then otherwise that. Um, and get rid of that nil, because that's... Okay. Oh, well, at least it compiled that time. Maybe we can use this. Let's go back to the original code that we stole this all from. Where was it? Shader toy. And... Let's have a look. Sampling UV I channel zero, which is in shader toy terms, I believe is this over here. So this output as a sampler. Um, I think we can probably see it in here. No. Never mind. But anyway, I'm pretty sure it's this. Um, let's go and have a look at what we have down here. Post-processing, what I was looking for, roughly, was um, something where he's putting the uh, gamma into the uh, W component, but he's not. We've just got a color and one. Um, so I'm guessing whatever this implementation is, just uses, maybe it's using the uh, green as gamma feature of FXAA, or maybe it was before that time. Um, but this is roughly how it's meant to be used anyway. Um, except we've got this stuff here as well. RCP frame times 0.5 plus FXA sub pixel shift. That is very interesting. So let's take that. Just shove it down here for a minute. <sighs> what are you doing here anyway? Go away. Um, and let's get this. Okay. And let's do our horrible little hacks again and just turn this into a float, which is going to get constant folded. Um, let's go and take this. Well, let's just translate it down here quickly. Um, it's going to be something like let. Uh, FXAA cell pix shift is going to be uh, 1 divided by 4 and then UV is going to be a VEC4 you know what I should just pass this into the like the parser and have it generate the code but anyway focus 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 UV2 um, where did UV2 come from no UV2 is oh yeah it's just the regular UV the frag cord XY, which is in uh, screen space coordinates or viewport space coordinates, um, divided by the resolution, it's going to give you a zero to one resolution. That's fine. Um, so this is going to be UV comma. Oops, why comma? No, wrong language. Minus UV. Uh, times RCP frame, whatever the fuck that is, we'll have to go see in a minute. Um, plus 0.5, um, and that's our FXAA subpixel shift. So we need to go and look at RCP frame, and we need to go and set 
the result of this expression is going to be fxaa pixel shader where we pass in the UV uh, when we pass in the texture or some sampler and we pass in um, one divided by the resolution which is going to be yeah res let's just say that for now I'll remember that but now we need to look at what this RCP frame thing here oh yeah which is one over resolution which is just this right oh reciprocal of frame one over resolution XY one over resolution XY Tip res is one over res. More commas. I love them. Get so fucked up when switching languages all the time. Okay, right. Something like that is what this was. And now we need to go and shove it into uh, whatever is going to give us uh, the right output. Actually, I'm just going to leave that there for a second because I can think of a problem, which is playwithverts.lisp. Down here, we're currently drawing with this helper function draw text, which is grand, but it doesn't really uh, give us what we need. Um, we don't really need much. I suppose we can replace this with a little um, pipeline just to do this. Yeah, maybe we'll do that. Um, okay. Da, 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 think, think, think. Yeah, because we don't want to use the radial blur thing. We just want to blitz something out. Okay. Here's our most commonly written code. D fun G. Some V. Taking a vert, which is a vec2. And we're going to remap it. Um, actually, the vert is going to be in... Yeah, the vert is going to be a... Vec2, so we need to turn it into a Vec4, and then we need to remap it so we can get UVs. Uh, so it's vert, and it's going to be in minus 1 to 1, so we need to times uh, 0.5, which is going to get into 0 0.5, minus 0 0.5 to plus 0 0.5, and then we add 0 0.5, which makes it 0 to 1, um, which is what we need for our UVs. So that's our vertex shader, D fun G. Sum F takes uh, UVs as a Vec2. And it is going to take and uniform uh, res, which is going to be a vec2 as well. That's going to be our resolution of our screen. And then we're going to uncomment this code. We're going to do this. It's going to explode. Symbol recip res is ident unidentified. And the reason is we need to use let star. Some sampler is unidentified. Very true. We need to pass in some sampler as well. Some sampler is sampler 2D. Cool, right, now we have a fragment shader, or what will be a fragment shader when we use it in a pipeline. So, some P line um, is going to be um, just using some V, um, taking a vec2, and some F, taking a vec. Oops. A vec to compile that. Great. Blat! And it's going to need, um, well, actually, we can just get the resolution here. We can say the res is whatever the um, current viewport is. So we can get the view, come now, viewport resolution. Um, that's the resolution, and then we're going to map G over some pipeline. We've done this so many times, haven't we? Oh yeah, slime enable concurrent hints. That would also be helpful. Um, and we are going to use Nineveh, which has a get a quad stream v2, uh, which is kind of what we want. And then we need a sampler. Some sampler. It's going to take some sampler. We're going to pass in, boop, and we are going to pass up res, which was the other thing, which we've got here, which is res. So now we've got this, and hopefully we can get rid of this, which will get rid of everything, and then we can say blat, um, and, but we'll pass in the scene sampler and 
That is much nicer. Okay. I'm really hoping this can show up on the, uh, the stream. Right. What we're looking for is right around the edge here. That is a lot more jaggy than that. Did that show up at all? Um, because it does on my end and it actually, yeah, that works. That's dope. Okay. <laughs> That's crazy. Okay. Now what this means, we're going to have to just shove it into Nineveh. And this is, this is going to be okay because um, if, X, if, X, if XAA is under public domain, then it's free for us to put it in, um, in Nineveh. What, otherwise, what I would do is I'd make sure I'm either forking a project that's the project so it's the same license or license it in the same way and transform it. I've got a few projects like that, which are just kind of ports. Um, but this one we should be fine. So what I'd like to do in Nineveh is provide both FXAA2 and 3, um, because why not? Do a post resize times four. Yeah. Um, you know what? Let's actually just take a couple of screenshots and let's, uh, okay. And we'll just bring them up in the game. Okay, so how do I do this? Screenshot. Yep. Screenshot. Stupid system that I use. Right. Desktop. Okay. Right. Let's cut down to just around here. Boop. And just around here. Boop. And then. Ah. Oh. So we got some lovely jaggies all the way around here, all these edges. Look at that. Way better. It's so good that that's a post process. And what's lovely here as well is uh, see if I can get it roughly. Oops, shit. Um. We can still see all these details down here. They have been washed out a little. So a little bit of smudging, but not by much. Whereas there's very severe um, or very nice anti-aliasing. Very like strong blurring on all these edges. But where the detail matters, everything's fine. Like here. Barely noticeable. Some big changes there. It does a pretty bad job around that. Um, actually, no. That's just going to be timing, isn't it? I'm an idiot. It's because this thing, when it spreads out, starts leaking onto there. So that's nothing to do with the FXAA. That's really cool. Um, well, that's dope. So, yeah, that worked. <laughs> I'm as surprised as anyone. Yeah, that's, that's really cool. It's so lovely that we can just drop this shit onto uh, onto our code now. Do we have a vignette on as well? We haven't yet. We should put that on too. Where is it? How do we do vignette? Ah. Okay, there's a few things to do. Grip. So we were doing that in the... Uh, blur frag and that will be part of the yeah right part of the radial blur um, really shouldn't put the vignette on after the uh, thing but we'll do it anyway um, what UV is a VEC4? Boo! Let's call that one UV2. There we go! <laughs> All the post-processing. So 
So now we got a bit of vignette around the edge. Anti-aliasing. It's like a thing. Ah, kind of works. Happy days. Ah, oh, this is so silly. Right. Anyway. This guy. Um, we're going to have to call FXAA2. And we'll take that. Go to the works, Nineveh. Oh yeah, we're on quick release branch. So let's jump back to master. Let's go on to FXAA. Or oh, this is just anti-aliasing in general because it would be nice to have other anti-aliasing. Anti-aliasing. Did I type it right? Who knows? FXAA2 dot lisp. Let's just drop that there for a minute. Yeah, 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 yeah. Make it. Let's go to packages. Let's go to where's our um, vignette. So we'll just copy that. Anti-aliasing. Let's do that and then do that. Okay, so that's definitely the right spelling. Um, actually, how is anti-aliasing normally written? Right, uh, anti-aliasing. Right, one word. Hyphened word. Okay. Webopedia has one word, but GameSpot and Wikipedia have two words with a hyphen. E. What does GDC say? Hyphen. That's it. <laughs> hyphen it is. FXAA2. Okay. In package. Oh, no. We got it. Boop. And there we are. Right. So now we need to make sure that we. Add this to the build. Um, Nineveh.asd. That should do. Up to master. Ah, oh, good times. Right, and now we can go back to our code that we had just a minute ago, this one. And we can go to our package. And then we can say we're going to use Nineveh anti-aliasing. And then in here we can change this to FXAA2. And it works. Dope. All right. Well, that's cool. Let's see if we can get some more stuff done um, before the end, because I wasted so much time, I feel like I kind of owe you guys. Um, I'm really annoyed about that logical fucking shit in my... Logical versus bitwise in the in Vario stuff. I'm going to go and double check that again. I just don't want to try and think now because I know it's not going to work well. Right, anyway, so. Can you just like double check with me? Logical is like operating on booleans and your bitwise is operating on the bits. So you're going to be adding the bits together. Like just normal fucking, that, that's how I remember it was anyway. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, we're going to look at barrel distortions. Uh, like that. Okay, leaf page, yes. Now there is a nice... Okay, so it, it's all about warping the screen like this. So you get a kind of old TV, Britney Spears, uh, kind of thing going on. Now I think I'm going to look at 
barrel blur for a second. Didn't think it was this one, though. The reason I'm, I'm looking for a particular one is there was a... It was called Barrel Chroma. Really? Come on, Shader Toy. Oh yeah, like uh, if you're if you're gonna use Shader Toy at all, get an account, go into the settings, and disable live preview. I don't own machine where this fucking thing doesn't crash. Uh, my browser so fucking hard, but it's fine when it's just static. Yeah, it, it's just static uh, screenshots. Right. Okay. Cool. So what we have here is a shader which will distort. A kind of barrel-like fashion. And this is a combination of a few things. So we've got... Um, this is doing a chromatic aberration, which we looked in a lot of episodes back. Um, it's using um, Kuzma's... Um, yeah, chromatic aberration uh, ramps. Uh, which was awesome. Uh, we implemented that as well as a stateless version that we got from Ferris. Um, so that's cool. Now this is quite the shader, and it's not too bad, um, but it's quite a bit to take apart on this stream given the time left. I've had a quick peek at this before. And there are a couple of... So what's, what's nice about this example is the distort part of this whole shader. They supply three different um, distortions. A barrel distortion, a brown con uh, conradi um, distortion, um, and a radial distort. And we can switch those out, which is nice because like, when we're doing it with Keppel, that's a really good candidate for our first class function. Because you can just pass that guy in um, instead of having to do these switches with comments and shit like that. Um, Now, this was taken from another example, if you can see here, if we go in a new link. This was a much simpler example, with just a nice barrel distortion. Um, they've got, this is like, an, they're using this as the test case, this is what a barrel distortion might look like normally. Um, and all we're doing is we're warping the UVs. For a given UV in this space, we're picking a different one, such that like we're we're stretching the image in a certain way. Um, this is the kind of classic one. We're not going to go through that. We're just going to delete it and recompile. Um, we're going to remove some comments. We're not doing tangential distortion, which means we're like, or our distortion is going to be centered, um, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, Positive values of K1 give barrel distortion, negative give pin cushion. Okay. Now, so we have an implementation here, and we have K2 here as well, which we could probably parameterize. Um, let's go and have a look at what we have in. Uh, let's get this guy out of the way. Um, here, let's grab this implementation and jump back over here. By the way, is this code visible? Um, oh, fuck, is it playing again? God damn it. Which one? Oh, this one. Piss off. There's a mute, isn't there? There we go. Oh, sorry, guys. Uh, <laughs> right. Sorry, it's not staying on. It'll distract me just it being there. Um, anyway. I, I'm so... like We're going to have to go back and visit our um, 2D engine again and get sound, do the sound... Oh, no, I've already got the sounds in there now. Because I did it for the game jam. That's so annoying. I really wanted to do that as an episode because it's super easy and fun and it was a perfect one to have some beers to because I wouldn't mind having a drinking version of one of these. Okay, so let's rip out these comments. And we can see some slight differences going on here. We're seeing that the UV is being treated on the way in. We've got a times two minus one. So basically it's remapping. Um from 0 to 1 to minus 1 to 1 
um, which this one doesn't do in its function, but we can see down here before it's called times two minus one. So they're doing the same damn thing. Um, so let's just cut that and stick it down here for a second. Um, let's paste it in here. No, wait. There we go. Did I get that right? Yes, of course, because that's going to get distorted. Then we're going to treat it. Yeah, okay, right. So we've moved that in. So these two are now more similar. We've got some other slight variations. These ones are using slightly different values. Um, we've also got a float distance here, which mult they use as a multiplier to these, which is kind of interesting. Um, I kind of like that idea, so I think I'm going to go with this one. Uh, we got a slightly different treatment of the values at the end. We can see here R2 is uh, they're doing x times x plus y times y. Um, if that sounds familiar, but that's because what dot product does, if you dot product something with itself, so that's exactly what this is here. So this can be swapped out there. Um, and again, your compiler should recognize that and do some things, but like um, maybe this will end up being fast. Who knows? I don't, I don't know. But anyway, we've still got this. Now it's looking pretty similar. A couple of different values, that's fine. Dot UV, one plus barrel distortion one times blah, 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 blah. That's the same thing. And then return UV. Now this one is, their one, they're doing some extra stuff here. So they're timesing by 0.5, which is halving it and plusing 0.5. So they're shifting it back into uh, zero to one space again. So they remapped it to the middle. Um, they, remap they mapped it to minus one to one, and then they remapped it back to zero to one. Let's see what comes out of the other side of this. Um, we've got something that looks a lot like some remapping going on, but with this plus one in here, um, which is kind of interesting. Ooh. So what we could do is we could take this and stick it in here. And seeing as this is basically just this. Good. So we've still got something that's working. Um, and now if we put in a distance, like 1. Whoops. Oh yeah, 1.0f. Okay, so that's not so great. What have we got going on here? Okay, so we've probably got something missing because we've got all this big border around here. But maybe we can see as we shift the distance what we get. If we up it to four, notice how it's pulling in these corners and it's pulling in obviously the, the, the corners the most and the top and the bottom slightly less. And with that, we're getting that warping. Uh, but we really need to adjust for this so we don't get these borders. Um, so that if we go back to Chroma, what's nice is that we can see, if we go to where Distort is called, Distort, Distort, Distort. Right, let's remove a few things. This is not necessary. That's for one of these guys. Bam, that one's gone now. Um, let's go, see, why is it? Oh yeah, it stopped for, interesting. Um, blah, blah, blah. Okay. We've got a call to distort here. And then we've got a remap. So it's calling distort with UV of 1, 1, which is like top right corner, with a distance of 1, and some other things. Um, and they're getting some value that they're then remapping to. Um, so rather than going from 1, sorry, minus 1, sorry, from... Ah, from 0 to 1, they're going from something slightly more than 0 to something slightly less than 1. And that's going to chop off that border that we were seeing here. And I don't have time to kind of prove that, but I'm going to go and do a bit of uh, surgery here and we'll see we'll see that happen. So I can't, what I would, what I'd like to do is go through the code um, with some more time and uh, show how that's happening. So, if 
They're using a remap function we don't have here. If I try and compile, or complain about remap. So we go here, we wind to the top. It's a very simple function. Um, it's one of these two, so let's just grab both. It'll be this one, actually. But yeah, let's just grab it. Ah, come on. Grab. And all it does, it maps um, values um, from one range to another. Okay. Why is that not right? Okay, the reason is I'm passing in one as the distance, and the distance is now four. Let's make ourselves a little distance float, uh, which is going to be this. Oops, what have I done? Semicolons. Okay, there we are. It's kind of hard to see, so what we're going to do is we're going to shift this distance. We're going to make it... I know time is provided as I time here as the sh in the shader inputs. So what we're going to do is we're going to say um, sign of I time um, and then we'll times this by 2 which is going to give us a value between um, minus 2 and plus 2 um, and then we'll add 2 to that. And then we can see what's happening. So normal, sorry, warped, and then it's going to go back to normal and go back to warped again. Okay. And if we didn't have this compensation here, this is what's happening. So we've got the normal image, and then we're pulling everything. We've got this distortion, which is just pulling in those corners. Um, oh, most dramatically, the corners. Now we could combine the the oversize remapping with this, but the reason I don't like that is this remap um, function is going to be the same for all fragments. Um, we're calculating it for all of them now because again, like this is an example, we don't really care. But you might want to. Um, hey, you might not want the remapping at all anyway. You might just want the distort. And also, you might want to make this a bit more efficient by doing this separately, maybe on the CPU side, and just passing that value in. Um, Metian says, push, please. Thank you very much. I will do that. Um, I won't push the bugs. They're already in there. You get them for free. Um, FXA.lisp is being used, so, so we better go and put it in play with ASD. Boom! Oh, I pushed it to episode 45. You bellend. Right, one second. Uh, branch create. Uh, yeah, starting from episode 45, make it episode 46. Are we on episode 46? I can't actually remember. Um, let's push that upstream to, yeah, master. What? What am I doing? Episode 46, origin, episode 46. So that's there now. And then I'm going to do an ugly rebase. Sorry, guys. Um, hard reset, back one commit. Uh, and then push, force, you. There we go. Um, goodbye. Okay, so let's go back to episode 46 where we have our code. There we are. Okay. Yeah, the code editor in Shady, to Shady Toy is really good. Um, well, it's very good for a browser thing, that's for sure. Um, okay, so... We've got a distortion thing now, which is doing the job. So let's get rid of this guy. And what we're going to do instead is uh, go and grab the other um, distort functions. What are we at? 2139. Yeah, we've got time. We've got time. Barrel distortion and radial distortion. Radial. And let's dump them in here. We won't go through this code today. Ah. Q 
Given a vec in the minus one to plus one, generate a text chord in zero to plus one. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? Wait a second. We take the point, we times it by two, we minus one. That comment can't be right, because then otherwise we're, well, it might be. Are you sure? Given a vec in one to one. But then the first thing we do is re... Like, this is the remapping we would do if you want to go from 0 to 1 to 1 to 1. So why would you do that if you're meant to be passing it in in that anyway? You might be making it larger, but I don't think so. I think that comment might be wrong. So I'm actually just going to... If it just works, then I'm going to assume I'm correct on that one. Now, so we got the radial distort and we got the barrel distortion. Um, what do we want to do? What do we want to do? Um, what are frogs? Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, the amount. Before we had float, which was a di the distance was float. Um, and now we've got amount, which is a vec2. Um, let's go see what kind of value is going in there. Whoa. Um, seeing as you people like the volume of the, like just having this sound on in the background, have some uh, van down. There we go. This is what, what you needed in your life. So uh, enjoy that while I go find uh, what we're going to do with the amount. So distort is passed in. And yeah, when he's. So he's passing in um, T, which is used for something else. I can't remember what that's used for. Oh yeah, T here is used for uh, linearly interpolating between minimum and maximum distort. Um, if we assume this is one, um, like, then we can just pick max distort, or we can just parameterize this distance. Um, these min and max are further down here. You can see that max distort um, is a vec2 that is then divided by a constant. So, seeing as this is being passed in, um, this is a float. So, both dimensions of this vec2 are going to be the same. We're doing a divide, so they're still going to be the same. Min is just a scaled down version of max. So, we're pretty much safe just to pass to um, have a vec2 that's the same size in both dimensions. Hey, Johnny. Oh, wait. Is this not playing? Oh, there you go. You've been missing out on Van Damme voice. There you are. Suffer that for a couple of seconds. Um, and then... Uh, we'll get on with this uh, distort. If I just jump back over to Barrel Distortion for a second. Let's go and tweak this. So if we turn this Vec2 here into a mount, and then we just say float uh, dist equals amount.x, then this is going to freak out. Well, it's going to freak out because I'm an idiot and can't type. But then it's going to freak out that the types are wrong down here. Because the dist is incorrect. Uh, and we'll do float. Fist. Dist2 equals vector dist. Are you enjoying your Van Damme? Is it soothing to the soul? Um, what have I done wrong? Oh, yeah, of course. Vec2. Nearly there. Let's go stop him. <laughs> He's amazing. The muscles from Brussels. Right. Anyway, we do, we don't need uh, we don't need that going. No matching overload function found in dimension mismatch. Okay. Yeah. Because uh, Conradi distortion now takes a vec two, which is dist two, and oversize should be taking. Oh yeah. Wait. Have I been... I haven't actually been using the correct parameter there. What have I... Oh, fuck me. What is that? Anyway. That's better. There we go. Now it's actually scaling properly. I had it locked to 4 before, which made it look okay. Um, but yeah, this is our basic barrel distortion. Well, the brown con radi distortion. Let's switch to uh, standard barrel. We just swap out this and this. 
This is probably going to be horrendous. There we go. Because it's absolutely fucking massive. Um, so let's... Uh, scale equals um, 0.1f. Oh, come on now. Easy, y'all. Right. So yeah, that's a classic... Uh, barrel distortion that you see in a bunch of places but it's really ugly and I found the brown con radio just a lot nicer to look at so I'd like to grab both of these um, as seeing as they're fairly common um, unfettered implementations and take those into Nineveh as well um, when I looked at the uh, chroma implementation um, they, they waived all copyright rights. So um, this seems to me to be under um, public kind of domain as well. As nearest to an unlicensy thing I can see. And again, barrel distortion, especially this one, so fucking common. Um, we could derive a new one of these if we wanted to, I guess. But that is, uh, is at least that. So I was thinking we grab those two, see if we can throw them through the... Uh... Oh yeah, we've got radial distort as well. Radial distort, I think, will be a little surprising. Um, all right, let's change the scale. Oh, yeah. Let's uh, just take off the remap a second. So we can see what's going on. Switch it back to 0 0.1 again. Yeah, it is a uh, it is just doing a scale. Now it is scaling in a radial fashion. If we look at the uh, the code up here, what is going on? So we take the coordinate that's passed in and we minus 0 0.5. And then we've got a bit of again, you see this stuff, you see these uh we see a multiply by 2 again after a minus 0 0.5. That's really familiar. Like if we just rearrange this a little, Right? Everything's still the same. But now we can see this as a remapping. So we're minusing 0.5 and times it by 2. What's that going to do? Okay, so if we have um, one in the, if we have a UV that's in the center, which is at 0 0.5, 0 0.5, we subtract 0 0.5, that puts us at 0, and we times by 2, which is 0. So the, we, get, we get a vector of length 0. Just So at the center, it's 0. At minus 1, minus 1, we subtract 0.5 which gives us minus 1.5 sorry wait a second sorry no if the uv is in this corner it's going to be 0 we pi minus 0 0.5 which gives us minus 0 0.5 minus 0 0.5 times by 2 it's minus 1 so there's a vector going from here to here of length 1 if you do the top right you get a vector going this way um, of length 1 so not not of length 1 sorry but anyway you get you get a um, yeah, minus one, minus one. So it, that remapping gives you the direction from the center of the screen to the UV coordinate you're interested in. They then take the coordinate that you were talking about in the first place, the one passed in, and they add that uh, vector to it. And then they sample, um, they multiply it by amount, so you're scaling, and then we sample from there. Um, we saw this before when we did radial blur for our chromatic aberration. Because what you can do is you could run a for loop and then sample at different places along this line that we calculate here from our coordinate. Um, and then you can blur those together and you get a radial blur. Um, but because we're just doing a radial distort, we're just kind of like grabbing things in equally in all directions. It's all uniform and just pulling them in and pushing them out. And so we get a scale. Um, so it's not very interesting to look at. The other ones are more interesting because they're pulling or pushing on different parts of the image, different amounts depend on uh, where they are. So I don't think we'll stick this one in because it's not, well, is it useful? It could be actually. Maybe we'll drop this one in as well. So let's take these three. Put some quotes around them. Put a little fence around it. 
if there are any fans of uh, Bravest Warriors, that's for you. Okay, well, let's get one more little use of our Vario import thing going on. Vario dot import import GLSL function. And we're going to grab this guy. This guy. That guy. Right. And. Oh, shit. No. And this guy. Beautiful. And I think I'm going to change this one back to be a distance again. And, um... Pass it in as a float. Because I preferred it that way. We can clean these up soon. Just format there. The expressions to look a little more like we would expect. Um, there we go, a bit more lispy. Drop the progon. Set P to be this. Alt F again. Oh, we can just... Oh, didn't see that there. Did I fuck up that a second ago? When I did that... Oh, I'm an idiot. That was meant to be times UV, because that was a Malt F. I remember that. Yeah, UV, one plus, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, okay, that's how it should be. P is times P. There we go. Radial distort. Okay, so let's see if the last few seconds we can get distortion on this as well. We're gonna <laughs> distort. After the anti-aliasing, why? Who knows? Right, let's just do it. Um, actually, will we? Maybe not. Ugh. Actually, no, we'll do it instead of the FXAA here. Um... Actually, no, we have to give the UV to the uh, thing. So maybe we can just... Uh, let's fuck around with that UV and see what happens. So let's give it a brown on Rady distortion because that was actually quite nice. Let's do so a distance of two. And there we are. That actually is... That's actually warping. And then it's anti-aliased, which is nice. Um, and now what will we do? Da, 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 da. We will... Do the remap stuff. Ah, oh, we don't have to do that. We've seen that works already. But that's cool. So, barrel distortion and... Vignette and anti-aliasing and silly world space shit from last week in the background. Oh, it was fun. Excellent. And we've still got five minutes to go. Maybe I should go put that thing in then. Um,
Whoops. Oh, fuck. Didn't want to press that. Want to downcase it. Do this. Do we have a remap function already? Oops, no, that was defund G. Remap. We do have some. So let's just do a remap 2 or something. Just keep that here. Um, we're going to use that. And what was the line that we were using down here? This guy. Five minutes, don't need to make any mistakes. Haven't got time for that nonsense. Okay. O size is we call the brown cone radius dis distortion again with the same, not with the same UV. Uh, with a vector 2 passing in 1, so the top right corner, we pick the corner because it's the most warped part and we want the maximum deformation uh, to adjust by. Um, and we're passing in dist, which is 2. So we want to pass in dist here. That's going to get the oversize and then we want to uh, remap um, that using our new UV and our one minus oops O size and O size. No No functional call clamp. Really? Oh yeah, because it's doing an Alexandria clamp. That's stupid. Um Oh yeah, there's not <laughs> that should actually throw an error. One second, bug three or whatever we're on. Uh, takes two. Oh, the name T uh, should throw error. There we go. So we've got the adjustment now. Lovely. And let's uh, let's warp it some more. That didn't seem to make any difference. Oh no, it did. Oh yeah, there's a nice big old curve on that now. Oh, look at that. Horrible. Fantastic. There we go. More silliness. Beautiful. Or not, but still awesome. That's the lot. Thank you very much. Uh, Metian saying, when I try the pushed version, it's very jaggedy. Yeah, try resizing the view and then calling the reset function. Um, I really should have a function in there that just uh, listens. Basically, we're not listening to the resize event. So the um, FBOs that are being used for the blur and all that kind of stuff are all the wrong size. So it's a big old fucking mess. Um, let's uh, turn this down to something a little disgusting, but not too disgusting. Two. Yeah, I think. Actually, two. Cool. Well, an hour ago, I didn't think we were actually going to get through all this, and uh, though we kind of barnstormed our way through it, we did actually make it to the end, and we did get the distortion in. Um, I'm happy to go through that in more detail. I'm sorry to anyone on YouTube if that was that font was too small for you. Um, I won't be making videos in anything smaller than um, 19, yeah, 1920 by 1080. It just won't happen. Um, I, again. I don't mind boosting up the size of everything for the uh, little bits of Lisp streams. And I don't mind making code like this uh, bigger for these as well. There's, there is a little toggle down here for it. Um, but we're just at such a premium of space here that I prefer not to if I can get away with it. Um, yeah. I'm just switch to the comments well before we wrap it up because we have hit time. Um, uh, 
Matty Ann, is that a pun? You're banned. Sergeant Creep is very soothing. And Ponder Pimp saying, Belgium produces three astounding things. Beer, chocolate, and junk Claude Van Damme. Um, waffles? The only thing that Bel <laughs> Belgium produces? Waffles. Um... Resize. Did I say resize function? I meant reset. Sorry. Um, Matian says, can you show some simple line drawing with Kevl sometime? That would be an interesting episode, actually. Um, I haven't done line drawing because it's scary. And that sounds really stupid, but it's uh, drawing lines well is, uh, is a task what we can look into. Um, but basically, but using simple GL lines... We could we could do that nice and quickly. That'll be easy. Um, yeah, that's it. Thanks, folks. Um, Love like Sentix is saying, and to round it off, going for a beer. Fuck yes, that's exactly where I'm going right now. So thank you. I'm gonna stop streaming because that beer is waiting for me. Good bad beer. See you next week. Ciao.